another topic I want to talk about as I bring up another graph, uh, graph and chart situation here is Kylian Mbappe, who decided to sort of shock the world and broke my heart, man. Remain at PSG for another three years, I believe. Talk about that, just I guess from a breaking your heart perspective, because uh, I know you're a Real Madrid fan, and then we can get into the card side of things and the impact there. So yeah, I did want him to go be a Madridista. I think it was important for the. I think it was important for La Liga for him to come to Real Madrid. I think it was. Uh, they need something like that. Now there are hints of Messi potentially going back to Barca, and there are actually like you know hints of Ronaldo coming back to Real. It's not going to be the same as it was, even if they even if they do come back. Um, but it seems like you know in 2011, 2012, La Liga had the best players. Like if you th- like back then, if you talked about soccer, you so- you talked about English having the best league, Spanish having the best players, and Germany having the best fans, and then France had the most money. <laughs> That's kind of how it was, yeah. you know. And like, because PSG is kind of all alone in their league, um, which is what I don't like about Mbappe being at PSG. I think he would be exponentially better if he was good to go to a different club, because I think he doesn't get tested as much being in the French league as he does, as he would be somewhere else. So at 23 years old, he's actually, he's actually a fraction of what Messi and Ronaldo were at 23 years old. Like if you look at their statistics, it's not even close. And so, um, you know, I want him to be kind of put on a bigger stage in per se, like the French league is just like, honestly, just nobody watches it. The people watch PSG, when they are watching the champions league and the PSG is obviously huge, you know, they've got Neymar, Messi, Mbappe, like they've got an incredible team. Nobody's doubting that. But you know, when you're, t- when you're looking at views, when you're looking at market share, when you're looking at card value, Mbappe's the guy, if he would have gone somewhere else, I think one, it would have tested him a lot more in his career Two, I think he would have actually been able to win a Ballon d'Or if he was on a different team such as Real Madrid or if he was to go to England like somewhere like Man City or something like that. These teams will have to shell out to afford him. And the one thing that I could say about this is that it's only for three more years. The guy will be 26 at the end of, the, at the end of his PSG contract. Yeah. Please, God, Killian, leave PSG for your legacy. Because I don't think his legacy does much different. Like, if France wins another World Cup, it'll be like, cool, he's already done that. If he wins another, like, um, French title, it's like, cool, he's already done that. Like, I think he needs to leave for his legacy's sake. I think his cards, like, he might have an initial hype because uh, he is back in the media. But, like, if he would have gone to Real Madrid or something like that, his cards would have skyrocketed, I think. Yeah. So, um it broke my heart from the fact of like he chose the easy route, you know, I, he's French. He want, maybe wants to stay in Paris, you know, like that's great. Cool. But like for me as a collector and as a fan, I wanted to see him take on a new challenge. Um, I wanted him to like just shock the world and maybe make a, like a move to, you know, I mean, I think even going to Germany would have better, but would have been a better move for him. Wow. Um, wow. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right. I mean, I think they probably is more competitive than the French league, but yeah. So good stuff. I mean, on the soccer card front with Mbappe, uh, my, my job at nooffseason.com is obviously to monitor what happens with players and then what impact that has on their card value and then make projections off of that. And so my initial sort of analysis um, after synthesizing the data, if you will, in the news is that no one has sold any of his cards since the news. Like none, none of his cards have sold, which basically means that they're not up or down They're They're people are holding. And I think that that's probably the right move right now. Uh, I'm holding, I, I mean, I'm not listing any, my plan wasn't, wasn't to list any of my Mbappe cards until the World Cup anyway, 2022 World Cup. Anyway. I think that's what most people are doing, yeah. So that's probably what most people are doing. So, but without this, without this, uh, 
bump in value of a news of a transfer to Real Madrid, is this a buying window on Mbappe? Like, is, is there, I just want to make sure we're not missing talking about something else with him. How do you see the trajectory of his, of his cards? I know I'm disappointed that he's not in La Liga either. I think that this probably would have been a marker that would have improved his card value long-term, improved his legacy long-term. But because he still is who he is, and he still will only be 26, 27 years old after this next contract wears out. Uh, does this mean that it potentially is, is an opportunity to go buy more, double down on someone like Mbappe? I wouldn't. Um, and here, here's why. I don't think that France is a – okay, so you're basically looking at his next window being the World Cup. France is a really good team, but I think the star of the French World Cup this year is not going to be Mbappe. It's going to be Benzema. Um, and so he might get residual outcome from that, but you have a lot more capabilities. Like Mbappe is going to be a big focus. And so similar to like a couple of World Cups ago, Neymar was the big focus, and then he, he goes out and lays an egg. And I'm sure – I wasn't investing at that point, but I'm sure his cards plummeted in terms of value. Um, and I think there's a lot more, like, there's a, it's, it's, there's a very high risk play into buying Mbappe right now because, like, you already got a lot of your price baked in. He doesn't have a lot of more room to run exponentially up. Um, now, if he's just, like, average, if he's just, like, scores a couple goals and has some assists, then he's probably just going to be fine. And you're not going to get an opportunity to sell high. You're probably going to get an opportunity to sell exactly what you bought it for, which I don't like that. If you're going to spend yeah. that kind of money, buy a different player, buy a Gavi, buy a Pedri, buy a guy that's like up and cut, buy a um, uh, Musa, you know, or buy a yeah. guy like something like that, where a guy that's going to use the World Cup to become a, a national icon. I mean, I wouldn't buy a guy that's at the peak of his mark. I, I don't know. I, and, and that also is because, like, I like watching Mbappe, but I don't believe he's as good as people think he is. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned something that – well, you alluded to something that I think a lot of people made money on sports card investing over the last several years, and that would be to – take say $2,000 that you would spend on an Mbappe and maybe break even uh, or take that $2,000 and buy 20 different Eunice Musa sort of mini banger cards and hold the 20 until he has that moment where they all, they all go from 100 to, to $300. And now all of a sudden you, you've made what, like do the quick math on that 1800 bucks. I don't know, maybe more. So I think a lot of people, for instance, can I, can I also bring up a transition point here? Absolutely. 